Hello, Pisces. My name is Abby. Welcome to your reading. So I'm just going to set up real quick here. Thank you so much to all of my subscribers, new members. Uh, anybody who's ever donated any money, I appreciate all y'all. I appreciate all the positive, loving, and wonderful, supportive attention. Um, anybody who interacts with my videos, good, bad, positive, or negative, I send you nothing but love, my friends. Okay, we're just here to take a look at the cards to see what the Pisces Collective might need to hear about to reflect upon for their own highest achievements for your best good for you as a person on the earth. Okie dokes. How y'all doing? I hope you're good, you're safe, you're at least well wherever you are. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, we have Page of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Oh, so... This is a very sweet energy. For some of you, there could be an apology in the mix here. Or you could be sort of trying to figure out whether or not you want to make an apology to someone. For others, it could also be love or an admirer. Um, there could be someone you have your eye on that is, you know, kind of uh, sparking your interest here. The way this little page is taking a look at this cup. Um, I'm going to clarify, this is the Marchetti Tarot, and I'm going to clarify with the Lightseers if what comes out in today's reading uh, isn't for you, or if you just want more. There's a playlist called Daily Readings that you can feel free to check out. Those are all timeless, okay? Um, so we have here in the main energy the King of Swords. Um, possibly you could be having an air sign person, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius person who is of some importance to you at this time. Um, you could also be being asked to really sort of lean into your logic, um, maybe to pull your emotions out of a situation. Hmm. Yeah, Knight of Swords, interesting. So there's a lot of movement, a lot of movement. I'm feeling, especially with this page here, for some of you, this might have to do with an argument. Knight of Swords can sometimes indicate like a brash kind of energy. Um, somebody may have gone off at the mouth about something, and it's uh, possibly, it feels like they were trying to look out for themselves, especially in the future. Mm hmm. From the bird here having that sight, let me take a look here. Eight of Wands, yeah, the, like a lot of communication. It maybe you're at a distance from this person, or there ha there's something to do with travel related to this. Um, someone who you might not be in constant contact with, but if for some of you, it could be that this is someone who positive or negative, right? When I say like they kind of pop off, kind of brash, it doesn't always have to be negative, but this can be someone who's like one of those um, like text, like compulsive texters, <laughs> where you don't just get like. Some people send a paragraph and other people send like 20 individual messages. You know what I mean? I, I have that kind of sense there, possibly. Um, and the main theme for this, you have death. So some Scorpio energy may be significant or it may not. Uh, but the, something is sort of transforming or changing. It could be that you're maybe leveling up the kind of communication that you want in your relationships, whether those are romantic, friendship, work-related or otherwise. Um, but let's take a look here. What's happening with this death card? The Emperor. So some Aries energy here. For some of you, it really has to do with you kind of taking control of something. This is like a calm, controlled energy. Uh, the Emperor can be a bit of a control freak. You do have them again here. Um, but I'm not necessarily getting that. It's sort of like when you get to the age where do you, do you, I don't know why I'm saying this, but like, do you remember growing up and like we all as kids probably had tantrums, but then eventually there was almost like a turning point where we gained this sort of like self-awareness and we looked around us at the kids having tantrums and we were like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you were able to kind of recognize all of a sudden what was a tantrum and what was genuine. Um, that feels like that might be what's happening here. Um, so whether it's good or bad, whatever's coming towards you with this communication um, or, you know, a mixed bag like most of it is, it feels like you're sitting from like a place of control, some calm, just thinking about your next move and that that might be different. You might be changing the dynamic 
um, of, of how things are happening there. And what your obstacle is here in this reading, we have the Three of Cups. Um, so it could be difficult for you to feel harmonious with this person um, or with other people in your energy right now. We are in the last little bits of Mercury retrograde uh, as I'm shooting this, though it is technically a timeless reading, um, and these things can happen at any old time. Three of Cups is like a card of community and celebration, so it could be a little difficult to kind of like feel friendly um, or feel like, yeah, harmoniously like aligned, I would say, with this energy. Let's take a look. King of Pentacles, possibly some Earth. I also wanted that and Five of Pentacles. Okay. So there could be possibly, like you could have an Earth sign person, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn involved in some way. Um, this could also have to do with some kind of, someone might have abandonment issues. Um, is what I'm wanting to say here. Could be you or someone else. The other possibility is a financial loss, but I'm getting abandonment issues a lot. Um, you could have someone in your sphere. I don't know if this is connected, but you could have someone around who does the kind of like, I hate you. No, wait, don't leave me. <laughs> that kind of thing. Someone who rejects you before you can reject them. Even if you're coming in trying to be, um, trying to keep your head on straight, trying to help out. I feel like the emperor is also a very industrious kind of energy. It's a real self-starter, someone showing up in their, the highest version of um, sort of divine masculine energy here, regardless of whether they're a masculine or feminine person, but it's all of us can tap into that kind of energy. There could also be um, some family uh, history that might be at play. You may or may not know about that. It may not be something that you're close enough to this person to know about, but it feels like the sense of community and celebration and coming together or re, uh, reunion, that might be kind of hard. Um, so this could be as simple as you were supposed to see someone for a holiday and the plans fell through, or you forgot to text someone and then they're upset, or someone is, you know what I mean? Something like that. In your suggested course of action, we have the Four of Wands. Very nice nesting energy here. This is, I feel like telling you to sort of like focus on the basics, fo focus on the foundations, um, to keep your home, your, your sort of harmonious energy happy. This could also be telling you that if there is a little bit of this sort of brash um, energy around you, the sort of Knight of Swords, uh, swift moving kind of stuff and there being like a little bit of a change in the status quo maybe like I said maybe you're handling things differently than other people are used to um, then this would be like really focus on being like kind um, but not necessarily a doormat right uh, this to me says like make your how your home um, and your basics your day-to-day -day, all very um sort of top priority in this funny way like because it's the way that these birds are sort of like tending to this nest right they are trying to make sure that they're nurturing something here uh, to give it the foundation for like more family more expansion whatever that means and of course family can mean whatever it means to any of you um let's take a look four ones again yeah yeah definitely this is the thing here. Um, even if there is a little bit of a rough patch, I'm not feeling like it's necessarily long lasting. It could be for some of you. Of course, this is a general reading, so only take the parts that make sense for you. But you got the four of wands twice here, right? So this to me says like, you're still allowed to celebrate your wins, regardless of other people, uh, regardless of, you know, their expectations. Um, you know, nobody needs to be you know, just because you're patting yourself on the back for a job well done doesn't mean that you're shoving your successes in anyone's face, right? This feels like for some of you, maybe taking this approach is actually a big accomplishment. The Four of Wands can also show us like an accomplishment kind of energy where we're passing through almost a portal of 
like crossing a finish line of going like it's when you buy your first house or when you move in together with someone or you do something that's leveling up in a way that says like I'm choosing my peace I'm choosing a foundation a sense of home um and celebration you know you go ahead and you you lean into what you've had success with here okay you're allowed to transform you're allowed to change my goodness now I'm giving rid of or <laughs> Moving on from past energies, you have the Emperor again. Now, the thing with this Emperor card is there's a, a sort of cold energy to it. If you see the hand there, how it's like turning to stone. They do have a steely bit of a gaze. Um, I would say, like I was saying here, you don't... You can be kind, you can be loving, but also not be a doormat, right? It's possible to set boundaries with people in a loving and respectful way, um, but also not be a pushover, right? Um, to be forgiving, but not to just like let someone get away with everything. Uh, so this feels like, I feel like this is a little bit more saying like, don't let yourself get too cold necessarily, but definitely still take the lead, okay? Let's see here. Yeah, two of wands. You might just have to wait for a while. You have other things that you can pay your attention and your mind to with this also. You see here, this person has like a globe and a little like minibus. They have all of these plans. There are all these things that they want to like pick up and take after. Um, could have an Aries person involved in something or someone that you feel like you're waiting on, right? This could also be like maybe a transformation of communication with an Aries person or, um, we have pretty well all the signs here. It doesn't, there's only four elements, right? It doesn't take long before they all show up, but this feels like you have other things also that you can, to let go of the past, you can choose to take the lead into a new future, right? To keep going on something. Hmm. In... Your key to tomorrow, Pisces, you have the Ten of Wands. Um, this Ten of Wands is, I feel like there's something that you're very close to completing. There could be something that was a lot, okay? Uh, Ten of Wands tends to be a lot of energy. It's a lot of projects, obligations. Sometimes it's family responsibilities. Sometimes it's when you're working two jobs, plus taking care of kids, plus doing this and that, plus also trying to support your friends, plus al also trying to do all of those things, right? Um, and it's okay for you to complete that part of your life and start to pull back in some ways, right? It's okay to do that. There's something here that wants to be finished, it feels like, possibly with duties and obligations. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fear attached to it, though. Why Why is there fear? This Three of Swords just feels like fear. Oh, fear of moving on, sure. Like, people won't be able to necessarily follow you. The people who are meant to follow you will follow you. Don't you worry about that, okay? Um, but you got here clarifying the three of swords. You got the six of, so or six of swords and the three of wands. So it feels like that three sort of transforms here, hey? You had the three of cups over here in your obstacle. And then there's a bit of pain, maybe um, something that's a bit of a disappointment, right? Um, and then six of swords moving on, three of wands, plans, expansion, going forward, right? Really nice stuff. Why? Why are you waiting here? Queen of Cups, yeah. For some of you, it might be part of this burden or whatever this is here. There might be a desire to come in and to, to really dig deep into that nurturing part of yourself. And it's a really, um, it's an important decision, okay? Uh, Queen of Cups, really beautiful, could be a loving energy, uh, mothering energy, nurturing energy of any kind, artistic, expressive, creative, um, very intuitive and um, it feels like there might be a little bit of a pull um, in the mind space that goes like, well, just help, you know, I'm getting a sense of perhaps help someone out one last time or do it this way or do it that way. You're going to be able to make the right choice for yourself here. Yeah. Mm hmm. 
this feels like really sort of taking the lead on your expansion because it's sort of like what I'm kind of getting off of this two of swords and this queen of cups is almost like how do you even put this it's like you've put off whoever this is for someone out there has put off coming into their full version of themselves because there was worry and concern about the others around them and how they were going to handle that right if I go off and do what I need to do what are they going to do without me because maybe there's some sort of um family obligation or connection even in workplaces sometimes right um we can get into these almost like family quote unquote work environments where it can sometimes feel like well if maybe you work at a little mom and pop shop and it's like man if i leave what are what the hell are betty and frank gonna do you know um but that's not really your concern right if you have you have other stuff going on mm hmm that you want to move towards, my dears. I'm going to give you a couple oracles just to close out quickly. That page of cups too, I tend to like to tell people to pay attention to their intuition. Um, page of cups can be sort of when we're getting intuitive messages, but we don't always know what they mean yet. Um, the call of the muse and ears wide open. See? Something that they want you to listen to. Hi. I just had to pause to go find the little book. I just want to give you a close-up of both of these. I love this kind of fox. I think that's called, called a fennec fox when they have those giant sort of elfie type ears. And then we have Call of the Muse, beautiful, gorgeous dancer. Look at this beautiful human. Oh, love it. Okay, so I'm going to read from the book. So I don't think we've had these. I think we might have had Call of the Muse before. Creative expression, yes. It feels like there was something almost that was like... Sorry, that was just my clipboard fell over. <laughs> um... For some of you, it feels like there's something that was almost like a, a family or work obligation that may have stifled your creativity for a period of time. So it feels like you might be now finding some time and energy to be able to get into that. Um, and that, like I said, the way you're communicating, you might not be as available as you used to be. And that could ruffle feathers. It could be that you're being asked all the time for stuff and people are grown now. They should be able to do something, right? Um, without you sort of holding their hand the whole time. Okay. So I hope this is kind of close enough. All right. So this says, it's creative expression being in the flow of creativity, turning in to or tuning into inspiration, allowing creativity without being self-conscious, writing and journaling as a means of connection. Okay, so it says, when you feel the call of the muse, you're being invited to create, to be the artist choreographing your life, serving on behalf of the great artist, divine source. While the process feels intensely personal, your ego and self-identification are, ironically, the most unnecessary parts of that equation. While you might think that you have the magic of your own, that you own the magic of your own creativity, can you truly say you're the source of the inspiration? Similar to the Spirit of Genius card from 29, which we've been having a ton, um, imagine your creativity stemming from another spirit guide, but this time the muse. Just as the genius needs to partner with your intellect, so too does the muse need you to open your heart and let magic flow through your intuition and your emotions. Stop seeing yourself as the center of the process and instead see yourself as a partner in a creative dance. Sometimes you might be inside the music and the feelings of the story and its expression, and other times you observe it from the sidelines, watching it all flow from an unknown yet deeply intimate source. Today your muse is calling you to be a channel and allow the creative energy to flow through you. The energy of emotion is waiting to be given a voice, a name, a shape, or a color. Journal, finish that writing project, start something new, paint, sing, dance, and don't worry about where any of it lands. It has its own plans for you. Your muse knows where this is all meant to go. For you, the big magic is in the experience of answering the call. Yeah, so feeling in charge um, and feeling like you can just create and get messy, roll your sleeves up. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? 
just to do it, create just to do so. And then we have ears wide open. So it says deep listening as a gift we give to others, understanding someone else's needs, showing focused attention, tuning into another and letting go of the ego's need to be heard. Okay, interesting. So this says the world is, con is constantly speaking to us and offering clues about what is really going on beneath the surface of things. We all have the capacity to hear beyond the noise that reaches our ears. The challenge is when we feel misunderstood and unheard. When we feel insignificant, it's easy to overexplain ourselves in, a, in an attempt to get acknowledged. Now's the time to let all of that go. Offer your attention is the great gift it is. It's time to stop multitasking, checking your phone, thinking of what you're going to say next, and doing all of the other things that keep you from connecting fully. Whenever we are in a state of chaos and distraction, paying attention to only some of what is being said, we lose the ability to pick up on everything, including that which is not being said. Deep listening is the way in which we immerse ourselves in the truth of the world. In this way, with ears wide open, we also open our hearts and minds to understand more than what is conveyed through words alone. Opportunities arise from the subtle cues we miss when we are not 100% present. Purposeful, open listening is an act of true respect and intimacy. When you are in this space of receptivity, letting go of the need to be heard or to be right, you become expansive and alert to meaningful potential. Right now, keep your ears wide open and you will find more than you were searching for. Interesting. Hmm. So it could be, like we were getting this thing about communication. Um, for some of you, it could be something like someone coming at you with a certain kind of communication or style of communication that on paper says one thing, but in your intuition, right, says something else, okay? Um, interesting. This could also just be you listening, right? Listening to your muse. I'm going to give you one from the Rebel deck to close out. These have cursing. If you're not into cursing, that's okay. You don't have to uh, stick around for this part. So thanks a lot for being here. I hope I'll see you on the next one. Okay, so we have here, these are pretty blunt. It says, it's not everyone else's fault, it's yours. You're a grown-ass adult. Stop blaming others for your shit. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know why that's not giving me anything else to say. Interesting. Usually I can go on about it a little bit. We also have the dollar dollar signs, make it rain. So something here that has to do with possibly your money, getting money minded, um, making it rain could be your creativity, could be something else. This is one of those ones. This feels like with this emperor energy, right? You're a grown ass adult, you can handle your shit. That's sort of emperor energy. Hmm. Oh, and we also have don't fucking force it, right? It says allow that shit to come to you. That's big time empress kind of stuff. Hmm. That might be a little bit of a reminder here because the emperor tends to be that divine masculine um, archetype that would be the, like, the yin energy, I think. Well, I always get them confused. But that empress energy coming in and is like, Remember how I was like with this one? It's like not getting too cold, right? Not forcing too much. Um, not get, letting yourself have your emotions sort of pulled out of it with whatever you're trying to do here. It's like trying to maybe balance both of those things in here. Okay, Pisces, that's what I got for you this time. I hope something in here was helpful to you. Uh, if you want to see me again, all I do is Pisces stuff on this channel. So feel free to subscribe. If you want notifications, turn on that bell. And I hope I will see you on the next one. Lots of love. Bye now.